Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have Sean Black from Happy Belly Food Group. He's joining us today to answer some of our questions about inflation impacting the food services industry, the exciting new opening of Lettuce Love Cafes across Ontario, the expansion of holy crap cereal and oatmeal, as well as some of the catalysts that investors should be watching out for with Happy Belly Food Group. Hey, Sean, welcome to The Dive. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, so Sean, let's start off with a little bit of macro. Canada's CPI data came in yesterday, which was lower at 5.2% annually, but we still saw food prices up 9.7%. How much is inflation impacting the food services industry? Well, uh, at the moment, it's you know it has a great impact. You know the uh, I, you know it's been really interesting to watch. Uh, we have noticed you know prices are up, but they're leveling off for us in in the restaurant business. We're noticing uh, the one thing that hasn't yet leveled off is labor. Labor actually today is a bigger impact than the cost of food uh, in the short term. Food is pretty stable, uh, but labor costs continue to uh, to climb. Okay, so let's move on and talk about Happy Belly. What is the two-minute elevator pitch for the company? Mm, good one. Uh, really, we are you know we developed ourselves to be a consolidator in the Canadian QSR and CPG space for emerging brands. So we look for companies that are on the growth trajectory but need some help, need some support, whether it's people or capital. Um, we consolidate them within our platform and help them accelerate that growth. So as a food brand consolidator, how do you choose which brands to acquire or partner with? Uh, three things, people, product, and process. You know, really we look for the three Ps. So we like meeting with the people, make sure we're, we have alignment with, you know, what we're trying to build. Um, second thing we look for is the product. Make sure what we we do is we call a belly check, you know, where the name Happy Belly comes from. Uh, we literally check test the food, try the food, make sure, we, you know, we believe that it is unique and has a, a, a much larger market opportunity than what we see it in today. So that it's an emerging food concept. And then um, the process. So we like the, the model of their business, uh, whether it's QSR or fast casual. Um, and then if we believe we have those three things, the people, the product, and the process, then we'll, uh, we'll lean in. We'll start to help accelerate growth with that company. What steps do you take to stay up to date with changing consumer tastes and preferences? Oh, I mean, read a lot. Um, you're reading a lot of the information that's out there, not just what's happening here, but um, I think a lot of food trends, you know, that eventually arrive in Canada start, whether it's the U.S., uh, the U.K., uh, the Middle East. Uh, I think there's a lot of influences out there today. I think immigration you see today is driving a lot of food trends and a lot of demand. Um, so you got to be really aware of what's up, what's happening in other places in the world. And then the other thing is, um, if you look at our group, uh, we're typically in restaurants every single day. So we're speaking to the customers, we're speaking to the staff. Uh, we're dealing with, you know, stuff on the front lines to understand what's in demand um, today. And you got to be really aware of that. So you need great technology in your restaurants, understand what's selling, what's not selling. Um, so it's all part of it. You got to be aware on the ground um, and be looking ahead for emerging trends in the, in the space. So speaking of growth, you announced a development agreement for the opening of 20 franchise restaurants of Lettuce Love Cafe in Ontario. Can you walk us through this? Yeah, absolutely. We were previously uh, partners and kind of the growth partners in a brand called Fresh Restaurants, uh, which is, you know, in Toronto, you know, a full serve brand, but the leader in plant based uh, dining, in my opinion, in Canada. So this time around, uh, we looked for a smaller model, more of a quick serve model. Uh, we acquired that brand in the late fall, um, had an opportunity to work with the team, uh, look, at the, look at the food and the P&L and work with the business, realized that there was a, you know, an untapped opportunity in, in quick serve. Um, so we've decided to scale that brand. Now looking us looking for an asset light um, business model, which is franchising. Um, we also went out and tapped a very experienced restaurant operator based in Ontario, had experience previously developing dozens of restaurants in Ontario, including plant-based. Um, partnered with them, brought them in as the, uh, an area developer for Ontario. And that I think is going to see, you'll see as a very common theme for us going forward is working with regional partners, local partners on the ground across Canada 
and international markets. We would like to, each brand that we partner with, we'd like to basically what we call it is going back, putting the band back together. Um, we have experience in this. We've developed almost 400 restaurants in Canada already. So we're literally going back to the market, our previous partners, our previous relationships, tapping them in for real estate and development. Um, the first one that we initiated that process with is Let Us Love. And I think you'll see very shortly, we will act on a significant amount more of growth in the franchise sector, um, scaling us quickly into multi-branded platform uh, as, across Canada in, uh, in franchising. Okay, so Sean, since you said that you get to eat at a lot of these restaurants, if you had to pick one item at Lettuce Love Cafe to recommend someone new, what would it be? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, I had our bowl the other day, and I love it. You know what I mean? It was a, uh, it's a great product. You know, if you like, you know, you got like, if you like tofu and some of the products in the, in, within the brand, um, you know, they're, they're very popular in my world to have stuff like that. They have a, a vegan falafel product as well um, that, is, uh, that is excellent. Um, so I've had that recently and I quite enjoyed my lunch. Uh, so lettuce love is great. Um, it's a, it's a great fit in our portfolio as for a QSR plant based. Um, and, and obviously, like I said, we just, uh, we now start dealing with pyro, which is a fast casual Greek. Uh, we believe the open ice is significant in, in that category. Um, so we'd like to follow the footsteps of lettuce love and, uh, start expanding that brand immediately across Canada now that we've closed. All right, so we saw that you recently expanded distribution of your holy crap cereal and oatmeal SKUs through in-store retailers and online B2B wholesale platforms. Could you give us some color on this and what is your strategy here? Yeah, you know what? Um, one of our board members has, you know, extensive CPG experience. Um, so strategy and planning and stuff went into, into motion about a year ago on that brand. Holy crap. And it has been... Um, you know, it's actually incredible to see the growth within it uh, expanded into an oatmeal line. So it's a product offering expanded. Uh, we've increased the number of doors that that, uh, that product is in today. I think we're getting close to a thousand retailers across Canada, um, retail stores. And, um, you know, it's it's experiencing record growth within our portfolio. So that was a brand that, you know, a year and a half ago, some might have thought it was dead. And it was, uh, it was going to be... Um, go put to put to pasture sort of thing as they often do retire it. And that's not the case. It's actually a very strong growth brand for us in our portfolio. Uh, in the right hands, that brand is achieving uh, better results than it ever has in the history of its uh, existence. All right. So last question here for you, Sean. What are yeah. the major catalysts that investors should watch out for with Happy Belly Food Group moving forward? Okay. Uh, well, if you look at our history over 2022, uh, we transacted once a quarter. On average, we did one M&A deal a quarter. Uh, we've started to slowly announce some of our organic growth that's uh, that's coming into play. Um, I think 2023, uh, we would like to deliver results of M&A the same or better than we did in 2022. So I think we'd like to continue our pace of at least minimum one M&A deal a quarter. Um, and we'd like to accelerate organic growth both through corporate stores, uh, restaurants, um, through multi-unit franchise agreements, area developer agreements, um, and through more stores to our CPG side. So what we call inorganic and, or, uh, and organic growth, we expect them to accelerate here as we enter Q2 um, and deliver on our, our growth trajectory, which is at least one major M&A deal per quarter uh, on average for the year. You know, if we were able to achieve four to six for this year, we'd be very happy. M and A deals um, and and significant quarter over quarter growth within the company. Um, just stay consistent. Just deliver boring um, growth Q over Q, and you know become a very predictable growth company within the sector. Okay, well, sounds great, Sean. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing the company's story with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. I don't know about you, but I am hungry now. I'm going to go grab a snack, but be sure to hit that subscribe button before you leave so you don't miss out on our future interviews. Bye.